Hello, Professor Bright here. Welcome back to the Sunless Skies, where last episode we spent some time in Perdurance, and, uh, well, it's a delightful place where the Empress preserves the youth of her most trusted advisors. And by trusted, I think I mean, well, I think it means most treacherous, or potentially treacherous. Uh, no, no, other direction. There we go. Unfortunately, we can't actually get in there, but, uh, hmm. We will return to that someday. For now, I just want to find another port because I'm that kind of guy. Love me my exploration. And zooming out, come on. There we go. Just want I had a button prompt for that, but anyway. Forward and forward still. Let's see what's said in the south. And, hmm. Hmm. I suppose we should actually level up. It's about that time, I'd say. Yeah, just to get us better odds on some of these events, let's let's start actually using these. Uh, let's see, what facet do we want? A masterpiece? Curious. Your masterpiece. You would not let your education go to waste. You poured years, sleepless nights, setbacks, and research into one great work. They called you brilliant, eccentric, and obsessive. They said it was a waste of time. They said it was impossible. Well, what the... Okay. So, I can't really scroll down, but, uh, okay, that's fine. We're gonna ignore that for now. I'm just clicking on this and, yeah, okay. Anyway, they said it was impossible. You proved them wrong. What were the fruits of your labor? A marvel of engineering? A revolutionary chemical bonding method. Its possibilities are thrilling, but have yet to be realized by lesser minds. You'll have to do it yourself. Or, is there a way I can, oh, right, there we go. A scathing critique of the new astronomy, and concealed within it three comprehensive and erudite volum volumes, which are approvingly stamped by the Ministry of Public Decency, is an encrypted but spirited cult revolution. Hmm. I mean, here's the thing. I'm totally down with that. Plus five mirrors and plus three two veils. Plus criminal connections, which... The more I see of Albion, the more I think, yeah, the criminals have it right. In this moment of inspiration, whatever this is. It's good to love many things, for therein lies the true strength. And whosoever loves much, performs much, and can accomplish much. And what is done in love is well done. Aw. Fun little sentiment. And then... Hmm. Hmm. We've already done an interlude in red and gold. Don't want to repeat things, at least not yet. Uh, let's see, a mentor or a lost love? Oh, hmm. How romantic am I feeling? Not that very much, so. A mentor. For a time, you enjoyed the favor and protection of a mentor, someone who saw your potential and decided to nurture it. Who took you under their wing? Hmm. Interesting. No, this is adding that affiliation. I was... Thinking, does this change depending on my affiliations? But I don't think it does. Hmm, I should have checked this beforehand. Ah, well. A blind bruiser. His attempts to distance himself from his larcenous past were of mixed success. His guests were scarred and rough-spoken and told bloody tales of smuggling and thief oafs and nameless murders of sea captains. Many sea captains. Well, at least two. Hmm. Hmm. I found Mordecai's bowl. Should I know a Mordecai? I mean, the name is familiar, but I don't think it has any special significance. Although, this could be a good place for mining. Possibly. I wouldn't know. Don't have the equipment for it, so I can't experiment with it. For better or worse. Now, let's send out the bat. Because I'm pretty confident in our supply and fuel situation. Bah, humbug. Alright, um... I'm assuming the range would have got me Perdurance, because I think this is around where I found Perdurance, right? Hmm. So yeah, let's go... Eh, yeah, just go straight to the west. See what we find. 
And we will go from there. Hmm. What's with all this mist? Or smoke? Oh, here's a thought. Can this smoke and smog escape the... Well, not the Reach, I'm sorry. Albion? Because otherwise... I mean, that would explain all this mist and smoke, because the whole work worlds and we just found some place. Oh, great! A graveyard! But yes, as I was saying, I mean, all this mist and smoke would be explained by those work worlds pumping out all that smoke. Even more smoke because of the hour looms that they have, which make them last, well, say make them last, make them produce nigh continuously. Hmm. And at a much higher rate than a normal factory would do. Eww. I got the feeling that London's going to be choking on itself soon. What? Oh. Oh, well, that was my own mistake. You reduced to the last pitiable remains of your supplies. Scraps of corned meat, moldering crackers, a dismal box of unloved lemons. Aw, oh, I like lemons, actually. But, okay. Break the news, gain terror. They protest, they clamor. Worst of all, they question. You shout them down, and they return grudgingly to their posts. I mean, you've got to find something here. Yeah. Like, there's this huge graveyard. Nothing of interest? Really? And a world. Like, just a straight-up planet. Oh, I could have found this on my own. Shoot. Oh, well. It gave me direction. But, yeah, that's... that. There's a planet there. And this? The most serene mausoleum. Oh, cool. Um... Give me one moment here, buddy. I just, I'm sorry. I'm just, I need to, need to get me some, uh, supplies, you understand. I'm jonesing for that food, man. Oh, shit. Shit, he has cannons. Okay, that was expensive. <sighs> you have defeated a glorious dreadnought. Shining, radiant, wrathful. It drifts in the sky like Ezekiel's chariot. Its golden plating is ruptured, the hymns of its crew silenced. Only the light remains, fading, but still burnished and brazen. Sorry, what? The... Oh, God, the bright-eyed people made it out of the neath... Oh, damn it. Okay. You will gain unusual cargo and set back the fortunes of Albion. I mean... 32% chance of success. Let's go for it. Damn it. At the heart of the golden engine, you discover a chapel. Freestanding panes of stained glass transform the dreadnought's stark light into washes of prismatic color. Most were broken by the violence, but one remains intact. The corpses of the crew litter the brassy floor, their hands still clasped in prayer. One of your companions cries out suddenly that the dreadnought's light has made her blind. Back on your engine, you remove her goggles to discover that her eyes have turned to glass in their sockets. That seems healthy. Anyway, we're just gonna park right over here. Yeah. Ugh. And then I think a trip back to London proper is in order. So to the nave, I suppose. The soaring sepulchral heart of the most serene mausoleum, constructed over the cooling embers of Albion's murdered son, the mausoleum was built to house London's most glorious dead. I see, that's the sun I'm seeing back there. Oh, damn it. They actually did kill the sun. I thought it might just be exiled, but no, it's dead. Proper dead. Okay, I'm gonna figure that out later. Kensington Station. Kensington Station is tucked into a side chapel. An elderly footman is lighting candles while waiting to guide visitors into the mausoleum proper. Be escorted inside. The footman watches you alight your engine. He coughs meaningly. Meaningfully, rather. Meaningly. <laughs> oh, dear. Lighting a fresh taper, which he carries in a silver holder, the footman leads you through a narrow arch and down a winding spiral stair. You can hear weeping close by, but the echoes make it hard to discern the source. 
Soon after, you hear a sharp burst of laughter and music. Occasionally, you can make out, make out the rumble of what the footman confirms to be the London Necropolis Railroad far below. At the very bottom is an oak paneled door. The footman unlocks the door, bows, and departs. The footman disappears into the gloom, leaving you alone facing a desk shaped like a baptismal font. A cheery registrar sits in the middle, waiting to greet you. Introduce yourself, there are protocols that must be followed in the mausoleum. Hmm. She has you fill out a form indicating your profession, age, usage of hours, and to confirm your legal status as alive. The Prince Consort's tomb is exceedingly popular. To prevent congestion, donations are requested. The greater the donation, the longer you will be allowed to gaze upon the sepulchre. If one is fortunate enough to garner the attention of one of the deathless, one must be respectful and only speak when spoken to. It does not do for the living to linger long among the dead. She flies away. She files away your form into an excessively large black cabinet. I'm sorry. Garner the attention of one of the deathless. Are these like the tomb colonists that you guys kept kicking away from London? Like, I don't... Hmm. Okay. Bells toll in the towers far above, a long doleful knell, sounding the hour of the consort's death. But when did he die exactly, I wonder? Hmm. Well. Here, guests to the mausoleum may visit the tomb of the prince consort, arrange for the burial of their own dead in the catacombs, or merely enjoy the solemn environs of the empress's monument to her departed love. Write our port report first, of course. The most serene mausoleum endures. The catacombs grow as the necropolis line brings more bodies for burial. Traders bring fresh hours into the mausoleum, endowments from the empress for the deathless interred in their, interred in their vaults. They're being kept alive? Hmm. Plans are in motion to add a new chapel to the nave while the Deathless petition the Dismal Chamberlain for a new, separate station for the exclusive use of their servants. Death has never seen so much in motion. Hmm. Curious. Contemplate the sun. I'm much more curious about that than anything else here. Albion's murdered son is visible from the Great Rose window that dominates the western wall. Tell me of it. In the failing light of the clockwork sun, you can clearly make out the shattered hulk of the doomed sun below. It is monstrous in size, even from this distance. It looks thrice the size of one of Europe's great capitals. Flashes of irradiant violet light pulse along the ruin, while smoke still rises all around the corpse. When Her Majesty entered Albion, she slew the sun with the aid of an immortal weapon of terror, the Unclear Bomb. Its handiwork is clearly visible below. The sun's cadaver is shattered through... is shattered though intact pierced as though by a thousand spires. Interesting. So, the unclear bomb, as I recall, was... Hmm. We saw that, though. Down in the Neath. We harvested something from it. Hmm. Curious. Basically, it's a bomb that unravels light, which makes perfect sense for being what you would use to kill a sun. Okay, things... Things check out, but I'm still wondering about a few things there. Uh, let's approach these Deathless. I'm curious what exactly they are. Her new, her, sorry, her renewed majesty's most highly favored courtiers prefer the upper climbs of the nave, away from excitable members of the public. Highly favored courtiers. What? They're like, hmm, well. The most serene mausoleum houses more than just the prince consort. Under its soaring spires, the Empress keeps her favored courtiers. These lucky few are provided with every luxury they might wish and a generous stipend of hours. The only condition of this bounty is that they are dead. A legality only. They cannot possess property nor hold political office as a result. They are the deathless. Occasionally, they deign to appear to visitors. Why would you do these things? Speak with the Duchess Incarnadine. A childhood friend of Her Renewed Majesty, the Duchess Incarnadine, was instrumental in the conquest of Albion. Her place in the mausoleum was her reward. Hmm. Curious. Ah. She glides along the flagstones, a great train of scarlet cloth following her like the telltale trail of blood in a penny dreadful. Today she is menacing the footman, 
loudly inquiring after their physiques and their athleticism. She requires only the fittest to survive her mock battles. She notices your gaze, but after looking you up and down, merely sighs. Insufficient, she says. Before gliding away, you can't help but notice the smears of drying blood on her brocade, nor the wash of crimson that trails in her wake like a red tide. Flimnin moves through the shadow dials, lighting fresh candles of the finest chorister wax. Hmm, perhaps not. And I suppose we must visit the memorial of the Prince Consort, the most dearly beloved corpse in all Albion. Hmm. The most serene mausoleum was built to commemorate her renewed majesty's dead love. His tomb is the heart of the mausoleum. The vaults, chapels, mourners, and quartiers, all arteries and capillaries to his memory. To visit the tomb, was, one must speak to the cheery registrar, which we've done. Join the reverent crowds at the prince consort's tomb, or... Deliver uncanny specimens to the upper gallery. Ah, I see, I see. These will actually... Okay. Well, for one thing, they'll get me new stories. But, for another thing, these reduce terror in different amounts. Okay. Does it reduce terror level, though? Or just terror accumulated? We'll find out. Join the reverent crowds at the Prince Consort's tomb. A few sovereigns will buy you a few minutes at the sepulchre. The cheery registrar marks your name in the account book before summoning a footman to guide you to the tomb. The tomb is sunk into a round chapel behind the choir, an effigy of the Prince Consort rests on top. His long hands are folded in prayer. Four sculpted seraphims support him, as though about to lift him up in flight. Crowds of visitors in mourning jostle for a better position. A lady in an inconceivable hat shoves her way to the front. You are afforded a brief glimpse of the prince's haunted marble face before you are ushered away. Fair enough, I didn't really pay much. Only lost one terror in the process. Hmm. This place raises a few questions. For example, how did he die? Because he was supposed to... Like, the whole selling London thing was to keep him alive. The Empress sold out London to the Bazaar, which dragged London down into the Neath. And all that was done in order to keep the Prince Consort, which was Prince Albert? as I recall. Yes, to keep him alive. So, how did that deal get broken? Hmm. Curious. I'm really curious about the fate of the Echo Bazaar. I should specify that, because we seem to be calling all the shops bazaars. But, hmm. Hmm. I wonder. Vast rolls of midnight fabric for sale, you say? Ah... Uh, Ah, hurts me if I had the sovereigns, but I don't. So, I will be buying that, though. Do you perchance... No, you don't. Okay, cool. Well, we have to make it back to London as soon as possible. So, I think that's what we do before we uh, call it quits here, because yeah, I'm not doing great. I'm low on hull. I'm low on fuel. Supplies are gone. I suspect I'm going to end up eating my crew again, which is very upsetting, and oh my god, this is so much worse than I thought it was. It's far as have faded, its light has died. Yeah, it has. Oof. You guys destroyed this thing with that unclear bomb. I can't help but feel that there will be repercussions for this. I'm sorry, what are you? Oh, hi. Ah, uh, you're possible to kill. Oh, shit. Nope. Not dealing with that. You kids are on your own. You have fun. But you are entirely on your own with that. Oh, man. Oof. And then again, we're near leveling up again. Hmm. Well, unimportant. Let's see if there's anybody trapped here, because that was really useful. Whenever any ship gets trapped, I mean... Mind you, it didn't do so great for us with that glorious dreadnought, but... Well. 
well, he says. Hmm. Actually, what happened to the... Thank you for that. But no, what happened to... The Dawn Machine? Because we have this Clockwork Sun, which I assume is a more, uh, refined version of it. And we saw those bright-eyed folks, so... Hmm... I'm curious. Very curious. And also starving. Oh, hey. I can't believe I didn't find you guys already. And... Starvation sets in any moment now. Or it doesn't. Or perhaps it doesn't. Perhaps I have just enough time to make it. Nope. Uh, let's see here. I am going to go with this 50-50 shot. Midnight, London time. You're alone on the bridge. While consulting your chart, a loud thump makes you look up. A frozen corpse is pressed against your forward windows, trapped there by your speed. The wind must have plucked it from some lost wreck and carried it into your path. The corpse's glare is insistent. Its mustache is bristled with frost. Send a member of the crew out there to remove it. Murgatroyd's thermal skysuits were invented for exactly such occasions. Damn it. A tragic accident. Somehow, the crewman you volunteered for the task became tangled in the corpse's arms as he freed it, and it dragged him away into the mists. You turn back and search for them, but they have been swallowed by the sky. Right next to London, too. Hmm. Curious, that. But no, no, I understand. I can't imagine having to actually reprogram that so it only works in the reach instead of just being everywhere. Ugh. Messy. Messy, but vaguely possible. Um, hmm. I'm not going to burn more fuel, so. Crew starving, hollow face and wide, wolfish eyes. How the cold bites at your narrowed bodies. It's hard as diamond and sharp as a tooth. How can you stop this damned shivering? Work alongside the crew. Can toil warm you? Can companionship? The exertion drives back the cold, but the company is muted. Are the crew comforted by your presence or stifled by it? A little more terror, but nothing... Doing about that. Hi, fellow. I'm just gonna put you out of your misery now. So, shh, 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 shh. just let let this happen, man. Just, just, dude, dude. Nope. Well, I made a mistake there. We're gonna just go from that last auto save real quick. Don't worry, I'm just gonna. Yeah, I kind of screwed up at the end there. Um, that wasn't great. Let's try that again without the dying. Be back with you guys in just one moment. Just, just, just a moment. Okay, so let's try this again, except differently. You, you're a very tempting target, but you're just that little bit too tough for me. At least when I have only seven hull left. Oh, right, this nonsense. Yeah, work alongside the crew. They like me? Great. Cool. So, having, you know, died there, we're gonna just uh, slip on in here, gonna turn in our port reports to someone, and we'll go from there. Now, Steam and Sapphire Yards, hmm. Make sure public decency, I know that's an option, but there was something else, as I recall. Office of Works, no. No, 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 there was talk of some other place I could go instead of the Ministry of Public Decency. Hmm. Ah, yes, I now have criminal contacts. Right. I see. I see, I see, I see. Hmm. Okay. You've heard of a less than legal organization operating out of this team in Sapphire Yards. They pay for information and may offer work to the bold, the clever, and those willing to displease Her Majesty, and I am more than willing at this point. Well, at least if it's profitable. Reach out through your criminal contacts. You have friends in low places. Perhaps they know something. Your connections are reluctant to talk. I hear the deniables have been sniffing about. Less known, the better. London's deniable constables, the plain-clothed instruments of Her Majesty's displeasure, are a persistent superstition of the underclasses. Eventually, a dubious rag-and-bone man directs you to one of the engine houses. Talk to the bookkeeper. He'll see you right. Hmm. Visit the stalwart bookkeeper. He occupies a tiny, smoky office cobbled together from corrugated iron sheets 
in the back of one of the engine sheds. It's stacked with nicotine stained account books and boxes full of oily brackets. The bookkeeper looks up as you enter and gestures to a chair. Interesting. Five favor for that, and 25 for an unlicensed chart, you say. Curious. Countless captains pass through the steam and sapphire engine yards. When they do, they talk about their journeys, the things they saw, and the things that they fled from. The engineers listen closely. Hmm. And then, of course, the bookkeeper sees everything from his little glass office, the more interesting things he records, and stores in one of his locked files. Let's deliver our port reports here, because of the two... Hmm. I think this will do more good for Albion. He maintains the company's shining public record. Anytime there's an auditor, he defends New Street's interests with a mountain fortress of files. As one would. Ooh, appears I delivered more than just that, though. You delivered a poor report, and there's a few more than I expected. The bookkeeper reads the report swiftly, making a few notations, then files them deeply in his haystack for f of financial records, beyond the attention of even the most persistent ministry auditor. Thanking you silently, he conveys that you are doing important work. If you say so, friend. Well, we can chat with him. He offers you a cup of tea, savagely stewed and swimming with sugar. How can we be of use? He is deaf, but content to communicate through sign language or messages scribbled on a pad of paper. Obliquely, he explains that he does additional work for an organization unaffiliated with the government, which has an urgent need for up-to-date reports on other parts of Albion. His patrons will pay for such intelligence to be brought to them, rather than the Ministry. What's more, he implies, earning the organization's trust might open the possibility of additional work. Hmm. Curious. Well, we only have, what was that, 40 sovereigns? So, that's not great. Uh, oh boy, I don't think I can actually afford much of anything. Well, especially not with these... F oh, God, why would you have those, like, prices, though? 20 and 40? Like, I can buy one thing of supplies? Is that... That can't be right. That... That cannot be right. Can it? Like, I just... That's barely anything. Can't do much of anything with that. Huh. I was left like three of these port reports here. That's worrisome. So how are you supposed to survive then? Are you supposed to just do these trading? Oh wait, hold up, hold up, hold up. I do have other things. I have, yes, stained glass and thirsty bombazine, which I might want to keep. But not that much, actually. No. I really desperately need some few few things. First of all, hmm. Ten hull for ten sovereigns, we can do that. Yeah, we do that twice. Then for efficiency's sake, uh, da, 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 da. oh wait, there was just a fully repair button. Whoops. My mistake. My mistake. Oh dear, this is what happens when you don't read all your options, kids. So, having done that, we're in a much better situation. I still have to determine exactly how we want to, you know, arrange our money, but, yeah, I think five and three supplies, four because we're going to consume one immediately. That sounds reasonable. But what about upgrades? What could we do? Bronze wood shielding, nice. Expensive wardrobe for extra hold space, which is really necessary. So that's what we're going with. Just gonna go with that right away, so as to, you know, actually survive. And I think we're doing pretty alright at this point. You know, I think we're doing okay. Not great. What did I do? No, get back there. And you go over there. Okay. Okay. That was a bit worrisome for a moment, but I think we're doing all right. Next episode, we're going to do more exploration since we now have, you know, more fuel with which to explore. And I think I'm going to head to the either western or eastern side. Not sure which. 
See, there's supposed to be nine ports, nine new ports altogether, and we've found four out of that. So I'm feeling pretty good. Feeling pretty all right. Feeling almost safe for now. Ah, <sighs> dear. This is all matter for the future, though. Thank you for your time. Note the like, comment, and subscribe buttons below. Use them responsibly, and I will see you all soon. Bye-bye.